up anyway. You feel what I feel. You feel the vibe? Yes. It feels good, like better than ever? Yeah. Yes. Like the best? You're picking up what I'm putting down? <laughs> right place, right time, right by design, you guys. What a gift. I mean, do you know how few people ever get to create a life exactly on their own terms? How few people get a platform where they can help other people change their lives? I want to talk to you as we wrap this up about building a legacy business. And I hope as we're starting a new year that you have taken some time. You know, they say that the average person spends more time planning their summer vacation than they do planning their life, right? So take some time as you leave SRC to really dig deep and find out what you want. What do you want? Because you are only limited by your vision. How big can you see it, right? W. Clement Stone says, whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe, it can Achieve. Achieve, right? But th what's the first thing you have to do? You have to conceive it. You have to think it. How big can you see it? You are only limited by your vision, how big you can see it, by your work ethic and your ability to persevere. So, for those who may not know my backstory really quickly, I have been here with this company for 34 years. Woo! times as long as I've ever been married <laughs> <laughs> and more than half of my life. How crazy is that? So I think when you hear the backstory, like we, we see the triumph, we see the success, we see the glory, but I think it's really important that we also talk a little bit about the struggle. So this is me with my three little kids sitting on a Toyota Tercel that my Nana leased for me so I could finally have a car for $127.65. Isn't that amazing? I don't know what I had for breakfast, but I can remember that <laughs> um, At the time, I was a junior high school music teacher, and I was at a crossroad. I did not want to go back to teaching school. I'm a single mom now, single mom. My kids are five, four, and two years of age, and I, I didn't want to miss their growing up years, but I signed a teaching contract. Like I, I, I'm going to need to make money. And right before school started, I happened upon this opportunity, and it captured me. I, I got a vision of what was possible, and I canceled that teaching contract. I jumped in with both feet. I made a whatever it takes decision at that time, and you know, I just needed to make ends meet. Turns out, I never went back to teaching school, and through all of the business ups and downs and learning like I had no business experience. I was learning as I went, right? Learn, or, 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 learn like it hurt. And um, through all of it and all the mommy guilt and you know, this was this was a not this was a belly to belly business in those days. You know, through all of it, guess what? They grew up. And when I see these little people and who they've become I have to believe that it's not in spite of the fact, but maybe because of the fact that they had an entrepreneurial mom who was scrappy and relentless, who was going after her dreams. Somewhere along the line, they learned that their dreams matter too. That's good. And they learned duplication. <laughs> I now have 11 grandchildren, <laughs> the oldest is seven, and I can tell you my greatest joy in the world is watching each of these couples, beautiful people that my kids all marry, raise these kids. You guys, because they watch entrepreneurship, these kids are growing up thinking big thoughts, right? And I watch, it's my greatest joy watching these kids being raised by my amazing children who supported me. Yeah. Now, Steve Jobs says, you cannot connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backward. So what that really means is you can't see it while you're in it. 
I remember all of the doubts and the fears and the challenges. I remember the defining moments. I remember the I want to quit moment. And I remember the triumphs, the successes, watching people grow, watching people claim their fondest dreams, all of it, building global teams, having family around the world. And you know what? In retrospect, I see the divine purpose in all of it, right? With that 60,000 foot view, I can connect the dots that I could never have connected while I was in it. And sometimes the very hardest thing, I love how you said this, Rick, sometimes the very hardest thing turned out to be the biggest lesson. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I had plenty of reasons to quit. I had plenty of reasons not even to get started. But guess what? I started. And I never quit. <laughs> so, dream, struggle, victory. When I first saw this concept taught about 20 years ago at a generic MLM event, I just went, yes! This is exactly the equation! This is it! And, you know, we have that dream. And in that moment, we feel so much inspiration. We are aspiring. We see big things, right? Possibilities yep. abound within our hearts. And then comes the struggle. A lot of people bail at the struggle. What happens if you bail at the struggle? You, you never get the victory. the victory, right? So part of what's happening in this whole amazing process is who we are becoming. If you want to be a person that can lead a team of 10 or 10,000, right? You need to become that person. Now, I'm definitely not one to dwell on the past. And I got zero victim mentality. However, what are your couple of things that happened along the way? Times when I was maybe faced with a, a struggle so hard that I wanted to quit, but I didn't, right? And I always had the choice to stay or quit. And I chose stay. So, I mean, even my very circumstances when I started, three little kids, no money, no business experience, that was a struggle, right? That being torn as I was leaving, this was, this was a belly-to-belly -belly business. I was away a lot. And the mommy guilt that accompanied that, like, am I ruining my children? Right? No money. That was a struggle. Guess what that meant? That meant that if I needed to go from Utah to California to do a meeting, I would have to drive my car. And guess what else? I might have to sleep in my car in a well-lit parking lot. It was a struggle. But I had a choice, and I chose to stay. Now, the previous owners of this company, the very original founders, for some crazy reason, they were threatened by me, and they did a lot of things to undermine me. You guys, I'm telling you some raw stuff, stuff that maybe I've never shared before. Um, it just kept me off balance all the time. In my first two years in the business, two and a half years, I had to rebuild my business three times, almost from scratch. One of those times, the owners were in a lawsuit with a vendor, and they had, oh, it was a tough time, which is a tough time in our business. And because they wanted no success or liability, they made everyone sign a new contract, so they, a new application, so they were really coming into a new company. My business overnight went from 20,000 people to 10,000 people, right? Like that just takes the wind out of your sail. So struggle, I always had a choice, right? I had a choice to stay or to quit. I chose to stay. And you know what? Products come and go, right? The very product that I got my Jeff's here first viable income from, um, <laughs> thanks my first seven figures, is no longer here <laughs> after a couple of years. I love that product. And you know, when you used to have this probiotic in these little beadlets, when they sunset that product, I, I thought my heart would break. But you know what? Now look what we've got. Chocolate probiotic, right? Just trust the freaking process. Products are going to come and go. And you know what? People are too. 
Yeah. Even the ones you pour your heart and soul into. Yeah. Some will come, some will go, some will stay. But you just can't get attached, right? High intention, low attachment. The comp plan's gonna change maybe from time to time. I think we're good now to go, don't anybody get scared about that. But I've been through eight comp plan changes. That's hard, right? You build to a golf plan and then the structure changes. It's a struggle. I had a choice. I chose to stay. Eight comp plan changes. Company name might change. I've been through three of those. <laughs> Management teams may come and go. The ownership may change. They come in with new vision, new ideas, right? Markets may come and go. I thought my heart would break. When three years after launching my very close Southeast Asia, that was my first market. I spent one week out in 1990, 1991, one week out of every month in Malaysia, Singapore, building that market. But guess what? They were new ways, but they weren't moderne. They weren't profitable. I thought, oh, my heart was ripped out. Guess what? Now I know that through India, ultimately we'll be back in Southeast Asia. And you know what I mean? Like, just we can trust the process, my friend. So, you know, and almost always these changes are for the best. Even in 2013, when we started talking about social retail, Tony and Sarah talked about this earlier, we started talking about these amazing ideas. Guess what? I kind of felt a little bit dethroned. Let's just tell the truth here. I've been the queen for a long time. I could have felt a tiny bit dethroned. And I couldn't let my ego get to me, and I could have retired at that point. I had plenty of money to retire. But as I heard the ideas about social retail, about a home for everyone, more success for more people, I'm like, if we can pull this off, these will be the best days of my life, and guess what? They have been. Thank heaven. Woo! I didn't let my ego get in the way. Woo, 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 woo. like my lenses. They can bring a new good look through this world, our Modera world, and the world through the lenses that I've acquired because I chose to stay through every struggle. Woo! And because when you can see through those lenses, you can be clear and calm, calm the chaos, in the eye of the storm. So, the only constant is change. I think you've heard this a couple of times today. And Albert Einstein says, the measure of intelligence is the ability to change. So nothing is more certain than change, right? And if you have a core value called disruptive, guess what you better get used to? Change. <laughs> change, right? So I want to talk about purpose. And Ozma, I'm so glad that you talked about purpose. Because when you align your life's passions with your business, and when you have that alignment, you are unstoppable. Guys, I am crystal clear that one of the reasons I was born is because I'm passionate about health and wellness. I was born to help people live well in their body. I geek out on the science, I love it. It's like I can't get enough of it. I'm also deeply passionate about personal development. My dad gave me a real-to-real -real copy. Can you believe it? It really is true. A real-to-real -real copy of Acres of Diamonds when I was nine years old. And I would listen to that stuff and think, oh, these are such big ideas. We can control our lives. We can make stuff happen. I'm passionate about personal development. Did I land in the right business or not? Because you have got to grow yourself to grow your business. And I'm passionate about entrepreneurship. 
I see the transformational power of entrepreneurship and the way that it can, just when you, when you design a life, when you live life on your own terms, it's transformational. And I'm really passionate about giving back. So, 10 years ago I read a book called Half the Sky about the marginalization of women, particularly in, in developing nations and a couple of other women were reading it at the same time. And I was so deeply disturbed, I knew I had to do something about it. And so, um, started, you know, collaborating with a couple of women, and we picked a name and a logo, we created a video, we found a platform called Global Communities, we called ourselves Women United for Change, and we love this program because it creates and celebrates entrepreneurship. So, we started talking to, to like-minded people, it became our passion project, and I share this with you for a reason, to, to punctuate purpose, right? So this is us in Tanzania. You might recognize a couple of the women in that photo. <laughs> yeah. Stephanie, Michelle Bard, Lauren Robin. Okay, so um, last April, 2023, I was on my way to India. And it was also International Women's Day. So I was reaching out to people going, oh, you guys, we've been to Tanzania, we've been to Guatemala, we've seen firsthand how transformational this program is. 50 dollars changes one woman's life. And, and we've seen the ripple effect into the families, into the community. You know, I, I was just trying to raise some funds. At the same time, I was preparing for India. So I was asking people to take it open doors. And I was saying, you guys, I've seen this firsthand in India. Women are finding their voice. They're claiming their name. They're standing tall. The ripple effect into their family, their community, when they get a little bit of economic power. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I was on, I'm like, my um, messaging to my philanthropy and to my business we're the same. And I thought, I am living my life so on purpose. Woo. <laughs> Some of you know that less than a month ago I lost my mom. The woman who gave me life is my life. And she taught me that I could be, do, and have anything that I wanted in life. Everything that I am that's good. I picked up some bad stuff myself along the way. Everything that's good that I am, I attribute to this woman. So as I share the qualities that you need to embrace, to become a legacy leader, to create a legacy business. I'm going to use my mom as an example. So I'm going to tell you her story really quickly. First of all, she was born to be a mother. And what's crazy is her challenges, right? So she was orphaned at birth and raised by her paternal grandmother, who was an immigrant from Germany. And she lived on Plum Street in Murray, Utah, in a little three-bedroom home that is a, was about the size of my kitchen and living room at home. Um, she was um, obviously German, right? And she said she felt so disconnected because she was being raised by an elderly grandma, but also because kids would go, hi, get to her, right? Like when she was growing up. And she just, it just was, it was hard for her because very popular, very gregarious. Um, she married at age 19, had me at age 20. And it was, it, was a, it was a challenging marriage. She endured infidelities, right? Kept it together for the family. She lost a son. My, my brother passed away at age 30, doing her drug overdose. Like, and this was in the day that you don't really talk about those things. It wasn't as common. I mean, this woman had a reason to go to bed and never get up. Mm -hmm. And yet, through every struggle, she stayed strong. She triumphed. She got the victory. And so, let me just give you a little laundry list. First of all, 
remember that you can be, do, and have anything you set your mind to. Take notes on this. Write these words down. Because my mom had the most positive attitude. She's definitely a glass half full person. And, um, <laughs> and, and through challenging times, that's when you need a positive attitude. You don't need a sunny disposition when everything's magical and going well, right? It's when things get tough. And she was always, always positive. The woman had grit. She had grit and determination like no other. Write it down. She had pace. You know, I know that slow and steady can win the race. I know that. But guess what? It's fun when you move fast. And that woman <laughs> had momentum throughout her entire life. So this picture of her right here, that was 10 days before she died. Right? In Palm Springs. And we were dancing and singing. She never wanted to live in a compromised body. And she was probably heading that way. She got what she wanted. She got what she deserved. She got to leave her own Perseverance, man, she was perseverant. And she was a get her done gal. She was very solution oriented. Like, don't come to me with a problem unless you've gotten an idea what the solution is, right? <laughs> like, let's pass the problem. Let's get on to the solution. Let's make this happen. This was her. And resilient. You guys know, if you've heard me speak before, this is one of my favorite words in the English language. Resilience to me encompasses not just the ability to bounce back, right? Like, when you have a challenge or a struggle, how long do you stay down? Or how quickly do you bounce back? That's resilience. But to me, it has something else. Resilience also means the ability to see a silver lining in even the darkest moment. And I want to tell you, to her last day, her eyes sparkled bright blue, crystal blue, just like that little girl with long old braids who skipped up and down the street.
extreme irritation, right? I learned how to read a room. So I came up, I'm like, once again, I am so sorry, you know, for being so late. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing that there was absolutely nothing I was gonna be able to do to retrieve that audience. So I said a little bit about the company, the products, the, the call plan, the trends and the timing, right? Just like a basic presentation. And I'm like, if anyone wants to talk to me, please come up afterwards. I just wanted to sink into the middle of the earth and be gone. I was so embarrassed, so humiliated that I messed up so much. So a Russian gentleman came up to me at the conclusion of that meeting. And he grabbed me by the hand and he said, I'm going to take this to Russia. And at this stage of my business, I had quit listening to people's words. I waited for their actions. So I just grabbed his hand right back and patted him on the back and I said, you do that. Let me know how I can help you. Well, unbeknownst to me, he started shipping product over in suitcases to Russia. And pretty soon on my printout, I saw about my hair. It's good. So, now where was I with my story? Okay. Suitcase. Okay. Suitcase. 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 Shipping them. Shipping suitcases over yeah. to Russia. And I said, I started seeing names showing up on my printout. Shvetlana, Igor, Roman, Kizanetsky. Right, I started seeing all these names. And pretty soon there are pages and pages and pages of them. And, I, and then another Ukraine, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, the Tajikistan, places I couldn't have found on a map before this business. And I decided I would order my entire download for now because I wanted to know how many people were there. Right? This is from one meeting. Sowing season, reaping season, exactly. not in the same season. Exactly. So remember back in the day when they actually printed these out? And they were green and white yeah. stripes with perforated edge of Bible. Yeah. Raise your hand because I want to see what the whole thing That one meeting that I thought was a flop. Mm. You just never know. You never, and that's probably the thing I love most about this business is you never know. So just a few years ago, well, probably a decade now, <laughs> time goes so quickly, right? Um, I was in Bulgaria for their gala event and they were celebrating having had the, you know, the, the company in their region for so long, and I was speaking, and one of my mentors told me, occasionally when you speak, come out and just take it in. Just breathe and feel, take it in. And so I did that. And in the moment that I was looking around like the stadium of people, I saw the ripple effect, right? And I thought to myself, what if I had fit? What if I could fit? So the next night, we were having our day event, and these Russian events, has anyone ever been to a Russian party? Oh my God. <laughs> they are going like all night long, all night long. Like four o'clock in the morning, you're like, is it really four o'clock in the morning? Huh? Anyway, so 1 a.m., they bring out a big birthday cake to the stage. And they invite all of the children of the marketers to come to the stage. Onto the stage, file 100, 150, I don't know, 200 kids whose names I'll never know when I was a mass of tears. I thought, I started this business for four children. And now look, because I persisted, because when I had a choice, I chose to stay because I kept moving, even when it was tough sometimes. So, there are children and the ripple effect that will come from that, I'll never fully know. Mm -hmm. But I know it matters. Yeah. And they have free enterprise brain in their hearts. So, it's easy enough to find the flaws in something. And quite often, we like to find flaws because then we can shift our purpose, or we can, sorry, shift our blame, right? Like if we're not performing, we can shift our blame um, to justify our lack of performance. But I want to just talk to you really quickly about what is right, right here, right now. First of all, social retail. We're the first. We paved the way. Others are trying to imitate. They can't. We're the first. <laughs> we created it, right? We got this. There's never going to be another first. Social retail. What about our clean mission? Yeah. And it matters. 
right? I remember when if you talk to somebody about sodium lauryl sulfate or diethanolamine or propylene glycol, they'd look at you like you had grown a third, a second, third head, right? Like just that glazed over look. We own that space, you guys. We pioneered it globally. We're now one of the largest manufacturers of the broadest line of clean label products in the world. You know that? Like, we own that. Woo! Life-changing products. Ongoing innovation. What about uplift? I'm so freaking excited about that. Collagen. You guys. You guys. Osma. Silly asleep. Um, I have been known to say, go ahead and take all of my physical assets and leave me the collagen. I will get to the top again, and I will create a biomedical income. Just leave me the collagen. Just leave me the collagen. Ain't nobody ever going to have that product but us. Nope. Ongoing innovation, category creator, full sided compensation plan, everyday people winning like never before. We have core values that are not just platitudes. We hire against them. We aspire to them. And they're a guiding force for us. We have a culture that is so strong and so amazing. And you know, the more defined your culture is, it will attract and it will repel. And the more defined it is, the more it will attract and repel. And we are continuing, my yeah. friends, you yeah. up what I'm putting down, to yeah. refine our culture. Yeah. That's right. That's good. Woo! Woo! We have the best leaders on the planet. Our lineup of leaders and up and coming leaders, you guys, reads so like the who's who, right? Yeah. Who's who? Amazing leaders. Tools and systems for duplication. It's a global company. You can make money while you sleep, right? Seamless pay. Um, amazing, amazing North American team. Can you just give it up for our North American team for this event? Brother, are you here? Where are you? <laughs> you are a breath of fresh air, my friend. Yes. Thank you so much for the expertise that you're bringing in Osma. Ain't nobody got Osma but us. <laughs> this visionary woman who I quote says, I'm not building you a business for 50 years. I'm building you a business for 500 years. Yeah. Talk about legacy. All right. So, has anybody ever raised a monarch farm? Has anyone gotten into the... Okay! I have some monarch friends back there. Okay, so back in the day when my kids were little, we used to bring these monarch caterpillars in and they have a higher survival rate, like 80 to 95% if you farm them. That's okay, right there, Erwin. Thank you. Uh, if you farm them, uh, uh, versus like a 10 to 12 percent survival rate in the wilds, and you got to get that milkweed and feed them every day, right? To my friends, right? You're like you got to feed them in there in about eight days. They consume 27,000 times in their body weight, That's crazy. right? That's insane. That's crazy. And then they go through a magical process: egg, chrysalis, and within like 15 days to 18 days. They're a butterfly. And this just baffles us because, like, you can see this process. They hang in a J, right? Like, and they shed their skin and they turn inside out, and then out comes a butterfly in, like, separate. <laughs> like, it's just this magical process. Well, if you wonder how that happens, query no more. <laughs> Evolutionary <laughs> biologist in 2003 named Elizabeth. Sapores discovered what is at the root of this transformation, this emergence, and they're called imaginal cells. Imaginal cells or imaginal discs. I love the sound of that because it conjures up the idea of what Rick was saying, that you can create something that has never existed before. We did that. We built a retail. We know we can do this, right? We've done this before. And so what happens is these imaginal cells, they actually are within the caterpillar as patches from its egg. And they remain dormant. And when the caterpillar goes to chrysalis, it releases enzymes that essentially turn its entire insides to just like primordial ooze, 
goop, if you will, right? And then the imaginal cells go to work. And at first, the immune system of the caterpillar, of the, right, of the chrysalis, thinks that it's an invader and they fight it, they resist it. They fight it because it's an intruder, right? But the imaginal cells, the imaginal cells persist and pretty soon they form wings and antenna and eyes and legs, all of it. 50 cells become 50,000 cells. Now, an alchemist is a person who transforms something through a seemingly magical process. Powerful, our thoughts, our intentions are so powerful. And do you know, my friends, it's believed that we have some of these imaginal cells within us. When I heard this, I immediately analogized it to us, right? We start as a single cell, and then, just like the imaginal cells, we meet resistance. Has everyone, has anyone ever met that resistance? Right? And what did you do? You persisted, because you're in this room, right? Persist. And then what happens in the chrysalis is these imaginal cells, as they specialize and form all these different parts, they begin to resonate at the same frequency. And they start passing information back and forth. Does this sound like us? It's crazy. Right? Passing information back and forth. And then there is, and I have chills all over my body right now, a tipping point, a tipping point. Multi-cell organism and a butterfly is born, my friends. When we come together, we are unstoppable! that you believe in something you can't see. You choose. You like that? Yeah. yeah. Good. So my friends, <sighs> leave a legacy. Create a life by design. My friends, the rest of the story yeah. isn't written yet. We get to write it together. We have the ability to see things that haven't happened yet. And together, we can make that happen. Throughout my 34 years, I always had a choice. I had a choice to quit. I had a choice to stay. I chose to stay. I don't regret it. So, as we head back, I want you to Tap into a moment here at this event when you knew, when you knew your call. Has everyone had that feeling at some point? Yeah. Are you sure you yeah. had that feeling at some point? What? Are you guys asleep on that? Raise your hand. Oh my gosh, I was in the wrong room for a minute. <laughs> Go back to that moment because you are called for more. It's not an accident that you're here. You're here on purpose. Take personal responsibility. If things aren't the way they want, you want them to be in your business, look in the mirror, right? And this is a company of destiny. Mark my words, as Steve Jobs says, there'll be a time when we look back on this time. When we're a billion dollar company or beyond, taking our place as we always will, and as we're meant to be, we'll look back on this time and we'll know, we will know that we went, we, we, that we finished the course, mm -hmm. that we did our job. And so I want to encourage you, like we'll look at each other and we'll know there was some struggle, there was some struggle. But the victory, the triumph is so much sweeter because of the struggle. And we know that. So I want to invite you to revisit your why, get into action, stay grateful, and my friends, get on fire! Because people will come from miles around just to watch you go!
remember, be back in this room tonight, 8 o'clock, the best party of your life. I will be there. I will have my best moves. I will see your best moves. But to do that, we have to kick you out right now. So we need everyone to move out as quickly as possible. So we